All right, we're going to get rocking and rolling here. I need to take a sip of my Jot coffee from my new KC Chiefs Cup from Simple Modern. This was a gift from Candy Thunder for Christmas, and I am drinking my Jot coffee from there. Jot is a company that makes like coffee concentrate. So you put a tablespoon in, do eight ounces of water, cream and sugar to taste, whatever you like. It is a lifesaver for this. Most of you guys know I record this content in the middle of the night because we run a business. We've got a family of five kids. So the only time that I have to do this kind of stuff is the middle of the night. I start at 10 p.m. and I stop whenever we're done. I've tried it without anything and there is a stark contrast between when I do drink jock coffee and when I don't. When I don't, it's garbage that you'll never see. So I am only alive and lifelike because jock coffee makes it possible. And we actually reached out to jock coffee because I love it so much and asked if they had some kind of affiliate program and they do and they accepted us into that. So you guys can go check out Jot Coffee and use the code DUSTY20 to get 20% off. That's how freaking good it is. Speaking of affiliate programs, in 2023, we will be exploring more of that kind of stuff because we got to make money doing this somehow, right? We got to. If we're going to keep devoting time to it, we have to be able to make something back from it. So the cool part is that we are only going to be reaching out to and working with companies that we actually believe in what they do and what they carry. So how it worked for Jot, where it's something that we loved and we reached out to them because it's something we wanted to talk about to you guys. We just wanted to be rewarded for it. We were going to do it either way. That's how we're going to approach everything else as well. So the things that we really, really love and care about and think you should know about are going to be the companies that we approach to talk to, to offer to you guys. So hopefully those companies have an affiliate program or some kind of discount that we can offer over to you so that we can spread the love for all the things that we already love and believe that you should really know about. I promise we will not be pushing garbage onto you and we are not in this to sell out or to get rich. That's not going to happen. We know that by now. However, if there's an opportunity for you to discover something cool that we know about and for us to get some kind of little kickback in the process, hell yes, we're going to do it. So, Jot Coffee, Chiefs, let's rock and roll. Am I the asshole for bringing up my brother's premature birth at Christmas dinner to get my parents to shut up? I'm liking this one already. I am a nurse practitioner and I am the primary care provider for a lot of the low-risk maternity cases at the practice where I work. I also work hand-in-hand with the doctors and midwives to create a healthy maternity, birth, and postpartum situation. My fiancé is completing her residency. We live together and have for a few years now. We aren't in any hurry to get married. We originally had plans to do so a couple of years ago, but then we got really busy for two years. It is driving my very religious parents crazy that their youngest son is living in Than. I don't really care. I'm an adult and I do what I want. We are getting married in June. Time out. Just had to give OP a round of applause here. So we are visiting my parents for Christmas. The way it came together this year is everyone is at my parents' house. So that's my folks, my three siblings, myself and fiance, and seven grandchildren. So 17 people. At dinner, my mom starts going on about how she is so glad that we are finally able to get married and she won't be embarrassed at church anymore. And my dad shows how proud he is of his three older kids who all either waited to get married before moving in together or got married right away after moving in together. My fiance was getting embarrassed and I was getting mad over this stupid argument we have had too many times. And a family dinner was the last straw. I have asked them repeatedly to just accept that they cannot control how I live my life. I refuse to stay with them when I visit even if I come alone. Hotels are just easier. So I started talking about a premature baby I had been reading about. It was almost three months premature and weighed about 1.6 pounds. It was super strong and healthy for being born so little and the NICU had high hopes for the baby doing very well. My mom and dad both got deer in the headlight looks in their faces. Too bad. Should not have f***ed around with my fiance's feelings. So I asked about my oldest brother. He was born almost four months premature. Is there a chance that we could check out the family album where we keep all the records of family's births and stuff? I already know my brother was over 9 pounds and almost 23 inches long when he was born. My grandmother told me all about it the first time my parents tried to shame me. The subject gets changed very fast. After supper, my parents told me that I should not have tried to embarrass them with private things that are not my concern. I told them that if I heard anything about my living arrangements ever again for the rest of my life, I would make sure to keep bringing up the fact that my mom was in her second trimester when they got married. Boom. Mic drop. I can't drop this one because it's connected, but you get the idea. My parents are mad at me for telling them how to behave in their own home, but my fiancé is happy that they seem to be off the subject for good. Am 
I the asshole? Hell no, and good for you. I don't know how premeditated this was, OP, but it was brilliant to have this ammo that your hypocritical parents who are harping on you and shaming you for living in thin got pregnant out of wedlock. OP, this is brilliant. It is a huge signal to your fiance. You stood up for her. You stood up for your relationship. You created a boundary and you also called them out on their hypocritical bullshit at the same time. In front of everyone, this couldn't be more awesome. Not an asshole at all. Your parents are hypocrites. They know that you know that they're hypocrites now and hopefully they never bring it up again i don't have much to say about this except for you're awesome that's it good job well done what else am i supposed to say op is a badass op is a badass op called his parents out on being hypocritical douchebags i wonder at what point in the dinner this all happened because it'd be really funny if it was like in the beginning or the middle not at the end it would be great you know because after that there's going to be this awkwardness and you have to be feeling this like swell of pride for drawing a line in the sand and standing up for your fiance and your fiance is like probably like i'm so hot for you right now and you're just like excuse me mom would you pass me the hypocrite i mean the gravy i mean you could have just had so much fun with this you were probably Probably the bigger person and after making your point probably just shut up about it but you really could have drove it home you know just every time been like can I have some of this uh, premature turkey now was this turkey conceived out of wedlock is this a turkey of sin is this a hypocritical turkey what kind of turkey is this it's important that we know was this turkey immaculately conceived Surely they didn't think they were going to be able to keep this a secret forever. They had to know it was a risk that you would find out and call them on their bullshit. Now, it's kind of like everything that they've ever said about this subject or living in sin or about having a child out of wedlock or getting pregnant out of wedlock or having premarital sex. Everything that they have ever said about this has just lost credibility. So, good for you. Maybe they'll shut up now and keep their hypocritical opinions to themselves. Hmm, we'll see. Am I the asshole for not attending my husband's celebration dinner due to the restaurant not having anything I could eat? My husband has been working really hard the last two years to advance at his company, and he finally got the promotion he's been after. I'm really, really proud of him. His parents are too, and they wanted to take us all out to dinner to celebrate. My husband absolutely loves prime rib, and there's only one place in our area that serves it, so he picked that restaurant. Thing is, I'm not fond of steak. I'll eat it, but very rarely. Pun intended? Question mark? I prefer chicken or fish. I looked up the menu before leaving, and right now they have a limited menu. The place only had one fish entree and two chicken entrees, and none of them sounded good for various reasons. I suggested that he pick someplace else so everyone can eat. He refused, citing that we rarely get to go to this place, but go to other places in our area regularly, which is true. But those places have lots of variety so everyone can eat. He suggested that I ask if they could prepare the fish or chicken without the marinades or sauces, but I didn't want to be difficult for the kitchen staff. Now you just wanted to be difficult for your husband. His next suggestion was that I order dessert while everyone else ate entrees. And then when we were done, he would take me to where I wanted so I could eat dinner while he and the kids ate dessert. So I opted to just not go because I didn't want to sit there not eating and not having a good time while everyone else was. My husband asked me to go so he could celebrate with the people most important to him. I told him no again and that he needed to get going before he was late. He did go, but came back a little over an hour later with the kids and they all had to go by. He said he couldn't think of what to tell the kids about why I didn't go when they kept asking without lying or making me sound bad, so he just got an order for them to go and let the kids spend some time with their grandparents talking in the parking lot. I told him he should have stayed, but he said that I put him in a bad spot with the kids and that I knew he wanted everyone there and that I should have just gotten over my picky eating for one night. I maintain if he really wanted us to eat dinner as a family, then he should have picked a restaurant with a more accommodating menu. Am I the asshole? Yes, you are the asshole! Your husband was celebrating a big promotion. They had things you could eat. You just chose to be a picky little princess and not go there because it wasn't exactly what you wanted. This dinner wasn't about you. You were celebrating with him and you chose not to support him or celebrate with him because you were being selfish. That hurts. I can put myself in this guy's shoes easily and see and feel what he was seeing and feeling and yeah, you seem like a spoiled little shit and that sucks because not only does it speak volumes about how you feel about him, 
him and the respect that you have toward him, but it speaks volumes to everyone else who was there as well. You had plenty of options. You had choices. They had food you could eat. You chose not to go. So that sucks. There is an update to this. Update. Some of these comments were pretty harsh, but a kick in the pants. Good. I've apologized profusely to my husband, and I'm going to take him to that restaurant this weekend and buy him some camping gear he's been eyeing as a start to making it up to him and changing course. How the Hallelujah. It's rare that someone realizes how badly they f***ed up and actually steps up and puts in the effort to start making things right. OP has here, and that's great. It doesn't erase the damage, but it's at least a beginning to, number one, acknowledging how bad the f*** up was and starting to make that up. I would add on to this, though, that you've got groveling to do not just to the husband, but to everyone who was there. So his parents took everybody out to dinner. The kids were there as well. Many people were hurt by your selfish decision not to go, and there needs to be some kind of apology and makeup to all of them. And I don't know what that looks like, but I I would strongly encourage you to do that as well. I think you're going to gain a lot more respect back if you do that. If you step up and to his parents say, hey, I don't know what I was thinking in that moment. I just, I made a selfish decision and I deeply regret it. I'm so very sorry that that affected so many people, including you guys. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the family out for dinner and I'm just very sorry that I wasn't there because I'm a selfish, spoiled little princess shit. I at least know that now and I am attempting to change my ways and make up for it. So I would like to take you guys out for dinner to my husband's favorite spot where they have the prime rib. Please come with us. My treat. That's what you should be doing. It's not just about the husband. It's mostly about the husband, but there were other people affected in here as well. And you looked bad to everybody. I don't know what he said to try to cover your ass here, but everybody knows if you just weren't there and you weren't sick or something, just like magically unavailable, then they all know that this was a spoiled princess move. So just make it up to everybody and it will be much better for you and for everyone involved. That was not an official accent that just came out of nowhere. I don't know which character that was. Let's figure out how big of an asshole you were. How big of an asshole is she, Gary? Let's find out. Let's take a gander at the ASCON scale here. As a reminder of the ASCON levels, ASCON 1 is the worst. ASCON 4 is the least amount of asshole. Uh, it operates like the DEFCON scale. So ASCON 1 is there's no way you should have done that. You're a terrible human being. ASCON 2 is you definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible person. ASCON 3 is you probably should have approached that differently. And ASCON 4 is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole. Maybe you're not. pre update here. I think you're somewhere here around ASCON 1 and ASCON 2. I'm trying to reserve ASCON 1 for those more terrible instances now where people are just absolute shit human beings. So I'm going to err on the side of caution here and say that she was an ASCON 2. She definitely shouldn't have done it. I don't think she's a terrible person for it. As evidenced by her realizing that she f***ed up because Reddit told her she f***ed up and taking steps to start making it right. Because she started taking steps to make it right, and now we're into the territory of the update here, that prevents her from getting to ASCON 1 because there was some coming back from it. And I think it actually bumps her to an ASCON 3 after she starts making amends. Was a 2. Update made her a 3, and she can get off the ASCON scale altogether. With a bit of elbow grease and a lot of groveling, you can do it. Don't be a chicken. Get it? That was a celebration party foul. And I'm glad that uh, it seems like, you know, you pitching a fit about going to a steakhouse where they have prime rib is uh, is a rare thing. Hey, she did it first with the whole rare pun. I don't think she meant it, but it was there. OK, prime rib is so damn good. Candy Thunder and I actually both waited tables at Outback Steakhouse a long, long, long time, like 10 years before we ever started dating. So we we both worked there. Our lives went separate paths and then we ended up reconnecting. But we have that in common now and we go back every once in a while. It's an official thing on the menu now. They didn't have it as an official thing on the menu back then, but they have Outback style prime rib. So it's this slow roasted prime rib, but they actually put the Outback seasoning on it and sear it on both sides. So good. C'est magnifique. But the uh, the regular prime rib mid-rare, that's my damn jam right there. Dipping a little au jus, or as we say it in America, ass juice. So good. And you take some prime rib home, slice it up real thin and sear it and makes the best Philly cheese steaks possible. And now I'm hungry. Cool. (laughs) 
And here you were scrolling away thinking, man, I really wish there was another AITA story from Dusty Thunder. Well, here I am. Let's do this. Am I the asshole for embarrassing my wife in front of our friends by not going along with her lie? Ooh, sounds spicy. When my wife and I got married, we were both working. Once our first child was born, she wanted to quit. Completely her decision. I started working more to compensate and she started taking care of the house and the kid. I am a pretty clean person and I help whenever I could or if she asked. I am an involved parent. Then we had another kid and I started working even more. At the end of 2019, my wife flew to her home country to visit her parents. Airports were shut down and all the flights were canceled before she could come back. There was a lot of red tape to unravel here and we couldn't get her back home until May. Like I said, the only reason I didn't do household works is because I was working too much and I discussed that with my wife and she was also okay with taking care of the household. I have lived alone for several years and until she quit her job, I always did my share of everything. I'm pretty far from helpless. At first, I freaked out a little as I couldn't work from home and I had kids, seven male and two female, to take care of. In the end, I figured it out. I was stretched a little thin, but it was nothing unmanageable. My wife came back home in the beginning of May 2020. She was very happy to be home and we were all happy to have her back. There didn't seem to be any problem. A few weeks ago, we were having dinner at her house with one of our couple friends when my wife told them that I was miserable without her, that the kids were miserable, that the house was a disaster, and that she had so much stuff to clean up, etc. She basically said that I was helpless without her and that I couldn't take care of anything while she was gone. I kind of chuckled awkwardly. I told her that the kids and I were definitely miserable sometimes because we missed her, but nothing other than that was true. I told her not to lie about me or my ability to take care of the kids. After dinner, she was extremely mad at me and told me that I was a jerk and that I should have just played along. She told me that she felt awful that I could manage everything without her, and she felt that the kids didn't need her and that she was insignificant. I obviously tried to tell her that it wasn't the case, but she kept yelling at me and made me sleep on the couch. Here's the thing. Just because she isn't employed doesn't mean she can't work or doesn't know how to work. Work. Similarly, just because I don't do things now doesn't mean I can't do it. I think it's demeaning to have me pretend that I'm a man child who has to be babied, doesn't know how to do basic things, cannot take care of my own children just so she can feel better about herself. I do not think it's right to portray me as an incompetent person because she feels insecure. However, she is still really upset and I am not sure anymore. Am I the asshole for not going along with the lie? No, I'm going to say you're not the asshole at all, OP. Well, you know what? I say that. Let's reference the ASCON scale here because ASCON 4 is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole, maybe you're not. And I think you're probably on a 4 here. So you're like the littlest bit of asshole here because you could have just waited instead of confronting it head on and making a scene out of it. I'm not saying you had to do that. You could have done it. As a reminder, ASCON 3 is you should have approached that differently. ASCON 4 is you could have approached that differently. So you're not, you're not an asshole. Ascon 3. You're an Ascon 4. Maybe you're an asshole. Maybe you're not. You definitely could have approached that differently. And I say that only because doing it in front of people made it a bigger scene than it needed to be. Obviously, this was a much bigger issue than you thought it was. And yes, she was wrong for what she did. Much more of an asshole than you are. However, um, this is probably something that should have been handled in private. It sucks for both of you. And maybe this isn't everyone sucks here kind of thing. I'm glad that you stood up for yourself and that you said, no, I'm not incompetent. Like, we made it work. Her pretending that you didn't sucks. And I understand that she did that to like justify her role, but that's not needed. In a marriage, as parents, it is very much a, it's a team sport. Marriage and parenting are team sports, 100%. And being able to pick up, I don't want to say the slack, but being able to, to jump in and help where needed for things that the other parents typically covers when you need to do those things is critical because shit happens in life and shit it happens to individuals in marriages. And when that happens, the other parent has to step up in order to just maintain and prevent the whole world from falling apart because it can very quickly. You could turn around and a month's worth of laundry is piled up and nobody has anything to wear. And when you have kids, that's a problem, right? So even just simple stuff like that or going to the grocery store or just cleaning up, like if one person is completely out of commission, and in this case, his wife was, he had to take on all of those duties and it wasn't optional. Failure was 
not an option here. He had to step up and do it, so that's what he did. Her pretending like he failed completely is the shitty part here. Um, so him calling her out in front of everyone is not as shitty as her lying about what happened. He just could have approached it differently. So, I don't know. You tell me. What do you guys think? I think he's an ass con four. His wife is a bigger asshole by letting her insecurity basically perpetrate a lie that, you know, she was telling everybody and threw him under the bus for something that never even happened. So, I'm not going to say that she's a terrible person for it, but she's definitely a two, I think, that makes her a two for lying about it and being willing to damage him and his reputation just to make herself feel better. That's a shitty thing to do, and it was a very selfish thing to do. I understand how she feels. Like, it's it's good to feel needed, right, sometimes, until your kids need you too much, and then you're like, I just need a minute. I just need a minute. Or like Chili Healer, I need 20 minutes where no one says anything to me and nobody asks me for anything. Mom just needs 20 minutes. It doesn't mean that you love your kids less. Sometimes you just need a minute. And I'm sure that the dad, the OP in this situation, now that he's got his wife back, (laughs) which by the way, like it's got to be this breath of fresh air. Like, oh shit, I survived. Like finally I made it. And then when you expect life to return to some kind of normal, then you have to deal with this brand new issue of her feeling insignificant because you survived like it's not complicated enough let's make it even more complicated by throwing some insecurity into the mix here my god just give the man a break right like he just ran a marathon for what sounds like four or five months until she was able to return and now she's thrown him under the bus by lying about him because she's insecure Like, dude doesn't have enough to deal with right now. There's no break involved here. OP, an apology for calling her out in front of everybody will probably go miles here. She does need to understand that what she did was wrong. And do not tear that boundary that you created down. It is not okay for her to lie about it. But you do need to further explain and say, I didn't have a choice. Failure was not an option here. I had to step up for the sake of our children and our household. And so that when you return, you weren't walking into a giant and mountain of shit to deal with. If for no other reason, for her benefit when she returned, should be enough to ease this situation. So it can be smoothed over. What she did was f***ed up. Hopefully she repents for that as well. You're an ass con for maybe, barely. Standing up for yourself doesn't necessarily make you an asshole. It's just, it could have been done differently. And that's it. But your wife's a two. So you guys, you guys both got some things to work on here, okay? Okay. Am I the asshole for not accepting and opening gifts from my mom and her family? My 16 male parents divorced when I was six. Mom remarried when I was eight or nine. Her husband has two kids, 12 and 14, with his late wife. They were always favored. They got more attention, more gifts. I complained, but I was always told they lost their mom. After some time, my mom adopted them, which I hated, and everyone still used the same excuse. It all came to a head this November at my birthday. I got half the value of gifts than them for their birthdays. I was pissed and argued with my mom and her husband. In the end, I told them that I don't want the gifts from them and the rest of my mom's family ever again, neither for my birthday or any holidays. I am done. For Christmas, I am with my mom at the morning and then I go to my dad and stepmom in the afternoon. When I woke up, I went downstairs to make some breakfast. The kids were already opening their gifts and mom told me to open mine. I told her I didn't want any gifts and to distribute them to the others and went to the kitchen to make breakfast. Mom, her husband, and grandparents came after me and told me how ungrateful I am to just open the gifts. I argued with them. Things were told. People were offended, and I went to my room and locked it. I waited till my dad came, and I just snuck out of the house. I told dad what happened, and he told me I should just open the gifts. I got some texts from my mom's side saying how I ruined Christmas and made my mom cry. She texted me and begged me to come home. I told her I'm not coming home till the 2nd of January when my school starts. Should I have just accepted the gifts? Am I the asshole? Okay, OP is 16. The other two kids are 12 and 14. So this is probably going to be a conversation amongst the comments here because there are some different schools of thought. OP has two parents that are split up. So theoretically, OP gets gifts from dad as well and gets gifts from mom's side. OP's step siblings only get gifts from the one side. They don't have split parents to, to buy them gifts. So overall, you know, maybe OP 
he ends up getting more. It's just not from that one family. And that is probably an argument to be made here. That's tough for a kid to be able to comprehend, though. And I don't think it's the right thing for a parent to do. When you're a parent with a blended family, it is very important to buy for all of your kids equally. Even if one of those kids only gets gifts from one side of the family. Like, you can't use the other parent's gifts to help balance your equation. I don't think that's an option here. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, but we have a blended family. We have multiple sets of parents involved, and we try really hard to make sure that all of our kids receive equal-ish gifts. You're never going to get it down to the dollar or the exact number of gifts, but we try to keep it as equal as possible, regardless of how many parents are involved. That's tough for parents of blended families. I think they probably are using the argument that I stated in the beginning here, where the 12 and 14-year-old, the husband's bio kid, Kids, they only receive gifts from one set of parents, whereas the 16-year-old, the mom's son, received gifts from multiple sets of parents. That's probably what they're thinking. It's just not right in my viewpoint here. And it obviously doesn't come across well because OP, the kid, the son, the mom's son, obviously had an issue with it and had enough of an issue with it to do what he did here. I do think that this was approached in a very poor way way. This could have been a much more civil conversation and it could have been something like, hey, mom and stepdad, I noticed this and it hurts. Explain it to me. Help me understand. Like, am I doing something wrong here? Why is this so imbalanced? And the story that he's gotten up to this point is that they lost their mom, right? So it's basically the whole, you get gifts from multiple parents thing, which shouldn't be that way, but but that's what, that's what OP has received as an explanation to this point. But I think if OP had explained that it hurts in a way that that was much more civil and adult, which is tough for a 16 year old, but still it was possible. It probably would have gone over better. The way that the flag was planted came across very childish and very spoiled and very entitled just because of how it was done right? It was a very, I'm going to take my ball and go home kind of thing. Now, Reddit votes that OP is not an asshole here. I'm tempted to agree, but things could have been handled differently. This situation probably should have been handled differently. Instead of just saying, I don't want any of the gifts, F you, I'm taking my ball and going home. It could have been a much more adult and civil conversation. What they did was not right. I'm not saying that, but OP could have handled this much better. It's a 16-year-old kid. I don't know what I expect. I don't know. I don't know that we can expect a 16-year-old kid to be able to process and have an adult conversation like this. Like they're just figuring out everything. They haven't seen enough life to know how to approach this kind of delicate situation here. What they did was fucked up. They have some fucked up reasons for it and OP could have approached it differently. So I'll probably get roasted for this, but the ASCON scale is the ASCON scale and it doesn't take much to become an ASCON 4 here, which is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole, maybe you're not. Ask on three is you probably should have approached that differently. And I'm going to say that, that OP here is an ask on three because he should have approached that differently. He doesn't have the life experience to be able to at this point. So it's like a, it's an ask on three with a grain of salt, probably an ask on four but technically an ASCON 3. Now, the parents are probably in ASCON 2 territory because they definitely shouldn't have done what they did. I don't think they're terrible people for it. They have a terrible fucked up reason for it, and they need to change how they do that. They've justified it to themselves somehow. They need to kind of have an out-of-body experience to re-examine that and actually see how it is hurting OP. They know now OP just did it in a childish way, but they know at least that it's a big enough deal for OP to be able to pitch a fit like this, so maybe they'll change things. But I don't know. This is a delicate situation. So many people have blended families now. You who are watching, if you have a blended family, how do you approach this? Do you see a better way that this could have been handled? Do you have the same viewpoints as the parents here? Or was the OP's response justified? Was it not childish because OP is 16? What could have been done differently here? Or is it all just the way it is? So let me know your viewpoints on there. I know that I'm going to get roasted for saying that OP reaches the ASCON scale as an ASCON 3 here, but it definitely could have been handled differently. That's all I'm saying. Could have been done differently and probably in a way that didn't cost OP so many presents and probably in a way that didn't cost so much drama. Am I the asshole for showing my nieces and nephew Polar Express? 
throwaway because I don't really use Reddit much. This was my husband's idea. I, female 29, babysat my nieces and nephew, male 4, female 6, and female 7, the day before Christmas Eve so that my brother and his wife could go to a nice dinner. They left around 6 p.m., so all I had to do was watch a movie with the kids and then put them to bed. I decided to watch Polar Express with them. All went well. They were very excited about the movie, but I figured that was just kids being excited. Fast forward to Christmas. I got a frantic call from my brother yelling at me for showing the kids that movie. I didn't know this, but apparently there is a set of train tracks that run behind their house about 200 yards back. And on Christmas Eve, my nieces had snuck out of bed and walked out to them to wait for the Polar Express. My brother put them to bed around 10 and found them at 6 a.m. unwrapping presents under the tree. He realized they'd been outside because their coats and boots were strewn about the hallway and their faces were pink from having been out in the cold. They don't know how long the kids were out there. Doctor estimated about 1.5 hours and took them to the ER because my younger nieces his lips were blue and she was stumbling, where they found out that my younger niece had, thankfully mild, hypothermia. My brother is beyond angry at me. He says I'm irresponsible and an awful babysitter, and that I should have explained to them that Polar Express isn't real. The girls could have gotten seriously injured or killed, and he completely blames me. He refused to bring the kids to my parents' house for Christmas, which really upset my parents. He's refusing to speak to me and says he's never going to let me see the kids again since I'm irresponsible and could have gotten them killed. I feel really awful about it. But at the same time, I really don't think it's my fault. They've recently moved to this house and I've never visited before Christmas Eve since I live in the city and they're about two hours away. So I've never seen the house in daylight and I had no idea there were train tracks near it. It never occurred to me to say that the movie wasn't real. All the kids still believe in Santa. So I didn't think there was any harm in showing them a Christmas movie. I've gotten mixed reactions from people. My husband says it's not my fault and it's completely on them, as does my father and sister. But my brother and my mom think I'm the worst person in the world. I feel really awful and don't know what to do. Am I the asshole, Reddit? No. You, OP, are not the asshole at all. Your brother is projecting his guilt onto you because he failed as a parent. Lock the damn doors. Put a deadbolt on. Get an alarm. If your kids can just walk out the fucking door with you not knowing at all, you're doing something wrong. They're not old enough to be sneaky teenagers and formulate a plan to, like, bypass security systems like we did when we were kids, right? Security systems are much more readily available to the the average Joe now anyway. Like the Nest system by Google is super affordable and will let you know or set off an alarm if a door opens. There's no excuse for those kids being able to walk out of the house and that is 100% not on you OP because you let them watch a f***ing Christmas movie does not make this your fault at all in any way shape or form. This is an absolute failure on the part of their dad and he is just trying to pin blame on you because he needs someone to blame. Any kid who watches is Polar Express and they see train tracks so they're going to like hop out of their parents car and stand there and wait on Christmas Eve this makes no sense at all this is someone who is unable to accept responsibility that they f- up. It's got to be someone's fault, right? Show this to your brother. Show this to their dad. And I don't know where mom was. Oh, well, he and his wife went to a fancy dinner. So this is on both of them. They are the parents. You letting them see a movie that millions of kids have seen does not make you responsible for them leaving the house without them knowing it. That is the big problem here. The fact that they left the house without the parents know it. So uh, you can let them know that Dusty Thunder says that they are the assholes. And because they are trying to blame you for this when it's clearly their fault, all you did was let them watch a fucking movie. That is some weak ass shit. Own up to your parenting fails and fix it so that it never happens again. Better yet, never let the kids watch any Christmas movies and then OP has to pay for the security system, right? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense because it's not your damn fault, OP. To the parents of the children, to the OP's brother and his wife, apologize to OP for trying to pin this on her. That is some fucked up, lame ass, weak shit. Y'all fucked up. Own up to it. Make it right by apologizing and take precautions so that it never happens again. F*** you. What a dick. And guess what? I'm going to say that OP's brother, the dad, and his wife are ask on one. Blaming this on OP was a terrible human being thing to do. There is no way in hell that this is OP's fault at all. Not at all. But they're doing it. They're like, yeah, it's her fault. She let him watch that movie Polar Express and they snuck out of the house on Christmas Eve it's all her goddamn fault no it's not it is not her fault apologize gosh people who have to blame other people for their own ups just really piss me off you think she's ever gonna do that for you again I'm gonna say not you just cost yourself a babysitter dumbasses sorry that one got me a little fired up
Am I the asshole for saying no to my in-laws taking our kids to Disney? My, male 28, wife, female 28, and I have two daughters, six and five years old, which is prime Disney age. They're both super into princesses and all that. We've talked about taking them to Disney over the next few years as we know they'd love it. My wife has never been before and I've only been once when I was 10 years old. It was definitely a memorable trip for me as my family had to save up for a while for it. We've always known that Disney would be our big trip with the girls. In July, my father-in-law got diagnosed with prostate cancer. After a few rounds of chemo and some rather intense stays at the hospital, it's only gotten worse. It's spread across to other organs in his body. And rather than trying to suffer to fight it, he's opted to just not do chemo and try to live with what time he has left. As a result, him and my mother-in-law have decided to make more memories with family. One of these memories is to take our daughters to Disney and surprise them with the trip yesterday during Christmas. At first, I thought my wife would be against it as well. We've always said we've wanted to get to experience taking them and seeing their faces. However, However, I found out that my mother-in-law cleared it with my wife last month. My wife didn't tell me because she thought I would be surprised and excited for our daughters. I sat through all of the rest of the night, but when we got home, we had a serious discussion about it. I told my wife I didn't want her daughter's first trip to Disney to be without us. She suggested we go along, but the trip is in February, and booking flights and hotel and tickets for just my wife and I for the time they're all going is still going to be almost five grand. I told my wife that we have to talk to her parents and decline the trip, but my wife, but my wife is saying that I'm being so selfish and heartless by robbing our daughters of this experience and robbing them of a core memory with my father-in-law before he passes. Am I being out of line here? Okay, this is a little bit of a complicated one, but yes, you're the asshole. There are several things to consider here. And as a dad, my immediate concern is not me being there to experience it with them, because although you would love to be there to experience it with them, that's a selfish feeling. So remove that from the equation here altogether, and let's examine everything else. As a dad, my immediate concern here is actually, are the in-laws, the grandparents, are they going to be able to take care of a five and six-year-old at Disney? For grandparents, like hanging out with kids for a few hours or, you know, even for an overnight thing, that's different than traveling with them and spending multiple days with them at a theme park. Kids are unique. They have unique needs. Like, And taking care of them means that you've got to make sure that they get up and brush their teeth and they put their clothes on and they're five and six. Like they're not independent adults yet. That doesn't really happen until I think 10 is the age where kids are, are really more independent and you don't have to tell them how to live. Um, but five and six, like that still requires a lot of parenting. And, you know, especially with one of these grandparents with bad health, are they going to be physically and mentally able to care for these kids at Disney for an extended period of time? That would be my immediate concern. And that would be the one reason that I would try to move heaven and earth to make sure that I was there. Not to interfere with that time, but to be a support mechanism that could help do the care for those kids so that the grandparents could enjoy their time with them instead of be working to take care of them the whole time. Obviously, this would mean that as a parent, I would be there and would be enjoying the time with them as well, but I would want it to be as focused as possible about them spending time with the grandparents. This is his last chance to make these big memories with them, and you're going to rob them from it purely for a selfish reason. That sucks. If you have the ability, whip out the credit cards and and make it happen. Obviously, that's not an ideal situation, but nothing about this is ideal. So move heaven and earth to make it happen for your kids. This is not about you. This is about the kids. So either get one of you there to help be a caregiver to make sure that the grandparents have support in taking care of the kids with the care part of it that ends up being a lot of work for a five and six year old or move heaven and earth and go in debt and just make sure that you can both be there to actually enjoy the time with them as well. I think robbing them of this time for the selfish reasons that you've cited here, OP, does make you the asshole. Sorry to say it, but it does. This is a huge opportunity for them to get to experience that with their grandpa who isn't going to be here much longer. So take yourself out of the equation and focus on him and them and do the right thing there. That's my thought here. So OP is the asshole. Let's figure out how big of an asshole he be. Ascon scale. As a reminder, Ascon 1 is the worst. Ascon 4 is the least amount of asshole that you can be on the scale. Ascon 1 is no way you should have done that. You're a terrible human being. Ascon 2 is you definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible 
successful person. Ask on three is you probably should have approached that differently. And ask on four is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole. Maybe you're not. I feel like OP is definitely an ask on three at least here because this should have been approached differently. Maybe an ask on two definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible person. I mean, the selfish reasoning here being the only motivator that's driving him to ask this whole thing is a terrible thing to do. I'm trying to reserve that ask on one for the truly terrible assholes that we run into, though, like the mother-in-law on the 10-mile hike. So that one's going to be an award winner. I'll tell you that for free. Let's say ask on two, because although the selfish motivation is a terrible thing, I don't think OP is a terrible person person overall. They're just letting their selfish desires get in the way of this. If OP follows through with not allowing his kids to go, that's probably an ask on one offense. I'm just giving him a little bit of grace for the hope that he ends up finding a way for at least one of the parents to go and that the kids still get to go and make this one last hoorah memory with their grandpa who's not going to be here much longer. So let me know what you guys think though. This is a complicated one. I think as a parent with kids over a broader age range that kind of gives gives me an insight into, you know, what areas need more help. I feel like five and six are ages that that need some more parental help. Anything under that age for sure, I would say they'd have to be at least seven for me to feel a little more comfortable with them going just with grandparents without having the parents there to be able to help do the work involved with caring for kids. So let me know what you guys think, though. You don't have to agree with me. It's more fun when you don't. So let me know what your thoughts are and let's start a conversation, shall we? Am I the asshole for telling my fiance that he embarrassed me when he started singing the happy birthday song to his five-year-old son at the restaurant? Surely you can't be this shitty of a person. Surely, surely there's some kind of twist in here that makes you not this terrible of a person. We's gonna find out. I, female 30, have been with my fiance, Ned, male 36, for a year and a half. You better keep him out of King's Landing. He has a five-year-old son with his ex-girlfriend. They don't have a custody arrangement, but he has him most of the week because the mom is currently sick. His son is lovely, but I noticed that Ned takes him everywhere he goes, including places that aren't child-friendly, and we have an issue with that now, but we're working on it. Don't you normally take your kid with you wherever you go? What's the alternative? He's five. You gonna get a sitter every time you gotta leave the house? His son's fifth birthday was days ago. Ned took us out to a restaurant to celebrate. The place was nice and looked a bit unfitting for the occasion because it was a somewhat expensive place. Anyways, we ordered food and then got the birthday cake, which was a surprise to me because I thought we were going to celebrate at home so we could be free to sing and play however we wanted. I still had no issue with that till Ned started singing the happy birthday song to his son. I was so stunned I almost dropped my plate. He was singing it at the top of his lungs, not even looking around or paying attention to how many people were staring at us awkwardly. I felt so embarrassed I kept whispering for him to stop, but he ignored me. Of course, my future stepson was hyped and a little too active, which isn't good when we're at a public place. I expected the staff, the manager, anyone to get involved and stop him, but no one did. In fact, some woman came up to us and offered that she help him take a video recording. I wasn't in it at all. I froze in my seat looking stunned and a little angry. He looked at me later asking what was wrong. I didn't say anything except, thanks for finally noticing. He didn't understand what I meant and I didn't explain till we were in the car. Car. I flat out told him that he embarrassed me the second he started singing in the restaurant. He looked shocked, saying he didn't get why I would be embarrassed by him celebrating his son's birthday and cheering him up. I told him we could have done this at home when we'd be more comfortable and free. He took it as in I was ashamed of him and his son, but I denied it and said that it just felt awkward and embarrassing to me because I've never been in this situation and also judging from the restaurant we were at. He said that his son's mom is sick and he's trying to do all he can to cheer him up and that all families do that and no one had a issue with that except me. Then when I tried to explain, he got mad and said he no longer felt like talking. We haven't been speaking since then. It appears he's still salty about me saying what I said and insisting that I see him and his son as an embarrassment. Am I the asshole? I think he's being too harsh with the whole ignoring me thing instead of talking it out. The title really summed it up. You're just that shitty of a person. Clearly, you don't understand what it's like to be a parent at all. Clearly, you have no interest in being a parent to this five-year-old boy and that sucks. That that's also a deal breaker. So Ned, this ain't your Catelyn Stark, man. This is not mom material. And if you're going to be with someone, you need to be with someone who is capable of being a mother-like figure for your son. This woman is so worried about what other people think of her that she's placing more value on that than she is your son's birthday. 
fuck that, man. If you don't want to be with someone who has a kid, don't be with someone who has a kid. Every parent embarrasses themselves for their children. That's just how it goes. You have to be willing to put the needs and wants of your kid in front of your own self-respect. That just happens as a parent, right? It's like you cash in giving a shit what other people think of you for your kids. It happens a lot of the time. You have to be willing to go above and beyond for them. She's not there yet because she clearly doesn't have kids of her own, but they've been together for a year and a half. She should be used to the whole him being a parent gig, right? She should be used to kids being with them at restaurants. She should be used to birthdays. She just doesn't want to deal with it at all. She wants to date you. She doesn't want to be a mother-like figure to your son at all. I'm talking to OP's fiance. Oh shit, they're engaged. That's right. OP, you shouldn't be with someone who has a kid, period. OP's fiance, call off the engagement and run, bruh. This girl is not the kind of woman that you want to be marrying. If you're going to be embarrassed by singing happy birthday to a kid, I don't care how and fancy the restaurant is, you don't need to be with someone who has a kid. That's all there is to it. And you're definitely an asshole. How big of an asshole are you? Ascon scale here. As a reminder, Ascon 1 is the worst. Ascon 4 is the least amount of asshole that you can be. We follow the DEFCON scale. So Ascon 1 is no way you should have done that. You're a terrible human being. Ascon 2 is you definitely shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't make you a terrible person. Ascon 3 is you probably should have approached that differently, and Ascon 4 is you probably could have approached that differently. Maybe you're an asshole. Maybe you're not. My gut reaction here is that this is an ask on one offense. I may get a lot of disagreement on it. Maybe it's a two because OP just doesn't understand, but it's a kid, man. In that moment, she was driven purely by her own selfish thoughts and wants and that she couldn't see past herself at all. She was made to feel embarrassed and was angry about how she was made to feel and didn't give a f- what else was going on. And that is an ASCON 1 offense. So yeah, uh, OP, I'm going to go ahead and say that you're an ASCON 1 here. You're the worst kind of asshole that there is. Definitely don't date people with kids. Maybe you need to be doing a lot more work on yourself before you start dating anyone period. Because right now you care way too much about what other people think. People in public who you don't know. You were engaged. I'm saying were because this thing's gonna get called off. You were engaged, so you you obviously plan on marrying someone and maybe starting a family at some point. You're gonna have to stop thinking selfishly all the time. You're gonna have to start putting other people in front of you, especially kids. I don't care if it's not your bio kid. If you're not willing to put your spouse's, your fiance's kid in front of yourself, then you shouldn't be with someone with a kid and you probably shouldn't have kids. Maybe that's a journey you just have to go on. She's 30 and you know, 30 is like the time when you start figuring life out. So maybe this is just a journey that OP needs to go on here, but this was an ask on one thing to do. And this woman is driven purely by selfish desires. In my viewpoint, tell me what you think, guys. Maybe I'm just a little jaded on this because I'm a father of five. And one of those five is a bonus daughter. I'm not her bio dad, but I treat her just like my own daughter and I put her wants and needs in front of my own. So maybe I'm just partial because of that. But tell me what you guys think. I'm going with Ask Con 1 here, which is the worst kind of spicy asshole there is. So tell me if you disagree with me or even if you agree with me or even if you just want to say, hey, that's some kick-ass Kansas City Chiefs gear. Go ahead and comment. Better yet, share it with a friend.